we can solve the issues that are affecting the youth and the young women in this country. If not, the rest is us being radical. We are really holding on, really. That I can speak for very many youths. We are really holding on. Tumejikaza sana, lakini it's almost like a time bomb. Sindio, hapa nyuma kidogo. Uja mawaberet mana. I'm Langat Matthew, uh, member of Kanu Youth Congress. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Wishimiwa. Every year we have, we, have, we have been singing of youth empowerment. Youth empowerment. And uh, you are actually encouraging us to create jobs for ourselves. Uh, my point of view, people like Wetangula should retire so that they can leave that space for youth to be employed. So they have created, for the last 25 years or so, they have been working. They can... They have resources enough to, to, to employ other youth to, to invest. So, in my view, they should retire, then they give up that space so that. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Austin Waziri, Kanu Youth Congress member. One of the main roles of senators is a duty of oversight, if I'm not wrong, right? Oversight to county project. Ideally, oversight on devolution matters. But now, unless there is another way in which you guys handle the matters that we don't know, your offices or your main home in form of offices is based in only one county, Nairobi County. So how do you manage to do oversight in all the 47 counties, yet you only base yourself in Nairobi County? Thank you. We're going to go there. Kulembele Kabisa, because we're marginalized and we're discussing inclusivity. Masole mengine ni mazuri. Mengine anenda out of topic. Wata tande palele, pandile tume marginalize sana. Also, we are balancing for better. Thank you. My name is Wambo Njoki, MCA Moranga County Assembly. My question is long, so I wrote it down. My, my question is about AGPO and financing for youth. Uh, the affirmative action policy where youth, women, and people with disability are allocated 30% of national and county tenders is a very noble scheme. However, delayed payments have negatively affected the effectiveness of this scheme. Youth have been in auctions, leaving them finan worse financially situation than if they never undertaken the tenders. Now, now I don't know whether you know senators that youths are actually avoiding the tender, tendering because of seeing what is happening to their friends. As Senate, why can't Senate pass a bill for both the national and county government to either provide a bank guarantee for the AGPO tenders so that upon completion and certification of supplies of works, the youths can go to the bank and receive payments which has been dedicated to that tender and also compelling the officers who do not pay youths within a stipulated period in both the national and county government to prosecution. Still on this side. Hi, I'm Saddam Gashie, chairman of Batuzi Youth Forum. Uh, I'd love to read my points. One, the youth should have a slot in all government institutions like the IEBC. There should be youth slots the second one, the position of the deputy governor should be strictly put for the youth between the age of 18 to 35. The auditor's office should be devolved to all the counties so as to curb corruption. The term limit should be introduced to all elective positions, including MCA, senators, members of National Assembly. Clear channels for the Wanjikos and Otienos for this country to air our grievances, especially like the rape victims. They have very little airplay to air their grievances. Public participation should be in the Constitution. If office bearers ignore their participation, they are charged in a court of law. Abolish payment of the help, good conduct, CRB, for the youth to participate positively, positively in seeking employment. And the last one, some slots in the National Assembly, Senate, should be put aside, especially for the nominated members of those houses, should be strictly for the youth. Thank you. 
Okay, we'll just take one more, one more last one, Sindio, so that uh, we balance everything and we'll, we'll have another, another, another round. Thank you. My name is Kalonde Alfred. I, I'm MCA from Makweni County. I also uh, came here in the capacity of Kenya Young MCS Association. I want to raise one issue that uh, is a problem. As we talk about the referendum, we must also include the issues of including adding more money to the counties because 15% is not, in, is not enough. For us that come from the counties that are in the grassroots, we are not feeling the national government in our areas. In fact, everybody in the counties have forgotten that the national government exists. Everything is put across to the county governments. So we must have more monies to the county governments. We may say there is corruption, but 23 billion shillings is money to about five counties. 23 billion shillings that is being talked about in the dams that we are talking about is five counties allocation. The second one is this. We should not be even talking about a bill to abolish the issues of help, the issues of clearance by ESCC, clearance by such bodies when youths are seeking for employment. That is something that is outright. It should not be there, even without a bill. I know Honorable Ketera has gone to the parliament to ask for that. One final one is the issues of help. Let our parliament take great interest on the issues of health. Our people are dying. We are not, in, we are not having better health care for cancer and such. One, the final one is the issue raised by the youth, by the Kano Youth Congress or, or something. People are not going to retire from seats. You must stand up and go and vie. Wetangula is not going to retire from politics. You are the one to vie for the seats. And let me tell you, we vie for the seats is not easy especially when you're a young person, but you must work hard. So you, you, you shouldn't be saying somebody is going to retire or she, youth should be set aside for some uh, seats. We are going to vie for them. Honorable senators, you are making politics very hard in this country. You are making politics uh, very expensive in this country for the youth to vie. Let me tell you, when you are vying as young people and without money, we're having a problem. So stop making money an issue in politics and out a problem in, in politics. So senior politicians, you must refrain from this uh, and out thing because it is, make us, it is making us, and the work of the MCA is just like a teacher. So that is my work. I should be earning by doing that work. But it should not be a problem that and out throughout. So you are making politics yeah, very expensive. Uh, Kalule, Kalule, that's a good one. They should not give money, but we are also receiving that money. Can we also stop taking that money? Yeah, if you give us, we throw it back to you. We don't need that money. Can we decide that? We are trying. You try not to take it, but you take it. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I think, okay. I think we take those okay. ones. Huh? We take those ones, we'll do another round. Unless you have a very burning question, a very burning question, Every, on the count of one, everyone burning question, stand wherever you are and shout. Yes, burn, burning, burning. Yeah, today's People's Forum, burning. Say, continue, continue. Burning. One, keep two, standing. three. Keep standing, four. keep standing. The, the burning. One, two, keep standing. three, four, done. Keep, keep standing, eh? I've been reminded to remind you that we are still on Twitter and continue this conversation online. Please, the hashtag is People's Dialogue Festival. discussion even in other quarters. The other two, he'll be. Sweep. Keep standing. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. My name is Felix. Dr. Niala, to make Swahili in the Mekwe. Me ningependa kuambia watu, mbona sisi wenye tunasafa, kwanza as a youth, tuko most safa, na si do not take part kubwa, ku participate kwa, ku vote, ku pea motisha, ma politics kupata nguvu. Na, miki tunakuja kujua, ndiyo sisi ma youth na kwaga wajinga, kama vile... Baba alitufanya. Tukujua hata kwa Biblia mwenye alienda Canaan walikuwa tu wawili. Si tukadhania tutaenda wote Canaan. Baba akaenda peke yake. So So mimi ningetaka ku fight kama youth member mtu usaidie cause sisi tukisaka ku preach politics mtaani tunataka tupate nguvu ya kuwa ta member kwa politics one meeting, one meeting. Tunapata watu wanaturudisha chini ama security wanasema tuna fight kitu iwezekani. Tuna hope but tunaweza function kwa politics. Ah, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Mawera Njage. I'm a student of leadership and governance. 
Wetana kukumbuka sana, nimekuuzia mahali. Mimi ni nabeba tray. You remember me at Kim's Garden. Yeah. So, mine, mine is a post-mortem. Um, tumekuwa pale ndani and then someone asked a question to Honorable Mother and uh, kauliza, what is the uniting factor to the youth to make sure tunakapa moja? And I want to challenge all of us who are present here today that we make up the majority. We make up close to 70 to 74 percent of the population in Kenya. And we can decide what our uniting factor is. Atungoje yueta ama honorable mother akama tuambie ati even though to unite. Let us look within ourselves. Ata tuchagwe mtu moja katetu. We can nominate one person to say meundo tunachagwa rais. Uone 2022 tutakuwa na mtu hapo mbele. As the youth, I'm trying to challenge all of us. Another one is we are facing a very big problem of ethnicity. And I understand that it's only a foolish man that doesn't change his ways. And Honorable Mother said that if we change on the ethnicity part, they are ready to support us. And I want to say again, as a person who understands politics, that is a lie. Because I cannot come to unite you if I understand that you are a resource to me. Naomba ni kunyanganye kidogo. Tafadhali. And then another one, on the, on the matter of ethnicity, vile tunabadilisha constitution, Senator Wetangula and Senator Shiro. Can we try and see if we can accommodate these tribes that we have? Because we're trying to run away from the tribe factor, yet tribes make us who we are. Me, I identify so much with my tribe, and I even call myself my names that are tribal and are neglecting my English name. So can we try and see if there is a place we can try and accommodate this tribe so that we keep, we do away with this problem that we have after every five years? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Very strong points there, but please let's be brief, yeah? Hi, guys. Yeah, my name is Shalink Grace Wamboi. I'm a former student leader at Mount Kenya University and um, from Moranga County. Uh, my concern is on the two that gender bill. Uh, a bill that we know have tried to be passed like three times in the parliament, but it's still four actually, but it's still, it's not been passed. And one of the reasons I think why it's not been passed, it's because we've not done enough civic education on what the two that Jeda bill is all about. Because people think that the two that Jeda bill is there to only favor women. We are not looking at the case whereby, just in case women are going to be more in parliament than men, men will need that bill. And that's the reason, that, that's one of the problems that men, these men don't understand. The reason in parliament you are going to have more women than men they are going to need that bill. That is why I'm asking all men to actually su support that to that gender bill because the time is coming that these women are going to overtake you. Okay, okay. And I want to direct this concern and proposal. Let's make it brief. Let's make it brief. Sorry, we don't have yeah, a lot I'm going of time. To, to present this proposal because we've been told to give our problems and uh, still our solutions. Why? Uh, because when we were trying to pass it the fourth time, there are not enough women in parliament. Actually, out of the 69 women that we've got, only 21 of them showed up. What, 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 what is the problem with the registration or the women that we've elected to go and represent women? I have a proposal for that. Why don't we draft a proposal to be um, the two that gender bill to be captured in the referendum? Because power belongs to people. And let the people of Kenya decide whether they want more women in parliament or not. Thank you. Once again, I urge you to be very brief. Don't punish your colleagues who are standing up. Hi everyone, my name is Sandraza. I'm a gospel reggae artist in uh, Minim Kenya. Okay. I'd like to state this, a few observations I made. Shidea Kenya, idati politics, crazy politician, corrupted police, tribalistic water. Truly, where are we heading to? We say, oh God of all creation, bless this our land and nation, but do we seek God as a nation regarding no denomination? And for us to come as one, we got to embrace unity in diversity, and we can never be divided by ethnicity. Corruption, ni option ya kila mtu, jukumu ya kila mtu. Kila mkenya ni jukumu lake kufight corruption. So, I believe love Unites us all. Yeah. I am a poem. 
Good afternoon. My name is Macreen and uh, Macreen Mukami. I'm from from Na Kenya and I'm a Kenyan. I have just a very simple question, a very brief one. And uh, my issue is about youth and women and the nomination finance, the nomination beat. And uh, yes, I work in a political party where I saw so many women who, who came and uh, we have the nomination fee, even if it's 20,000 and someone is willing to, to run for a seat and maybe they, are, they, are, they don't have money and they have multitude. And uh, I just, I'm just asking the parliament or something. Uh, can we have a national law uh, that can guide or can have minimum minimum nomination fee for for the youth and the women so that they don't all of them go for independent independent bit thank you thank you we're taking the last one for the last man standing oh yes oh no not the last one Weta tunakupenda sana hata kama ulikataa kubeba Biblia. Ningependa <laughs> ninge, ninge kuomba sana weta. Wewe uko na sisi hapa hivi na umetoa like my youth in afa wasimame wapate hizi viti. Leaders as an example, wewe utoe kijana tu from nowhere. Si lazima ushindwe. Shikilia kijana mmoja utusetie example. Thank you so much. Kuna MC ya kwa hapa nasema niko tayari hapa. Mimi kiongozi wangu ongea alafu nionge. Because mimi na maswali mingi baba. Ngoja si wewe umeongea. Oh, oh ah, asante. Uh, Mbaka is my former schoolmate so na, na anarudisha mkono. Mine was actually to say first of all I thank the senators for coming. I myself am an MCA. It's never granted. Before I was an MCA we would call leaders for such forums some would snap. So I always take it as a an honor that you've come here and you're ready to face the challenge and the heat. My question is on the, on the ballooming wage bill. And uh, I had the president talk about it on the devolution summit. And it's something in the counties we had a problem. That we get like, example, our county gets 5.4 billion uh, for the financial year. You find like 4 point something is going for, or even 3 points around there, going to paying wages and salaries. So even by the time I'm going to ask something for development for youth, even if it's the sports academies, or developmental academies, there isn't. And yet we have uh, people who actually have worked for long and are afraid to retire because we did our own research so that by the time we're giving our uh, views to the Sakaja team uh, that does the labor, that, so they knew what was the, We have an example, 70 year old, yeah? He is willing and ready to retire, but he is afraid because he wants to retire and leave the seat so that at least the county can hire someone who's young. Example, an, uh, an extension officer. Where I'm from, we get issues of, uh, we border Isiolo, your county, Baringo and Samburu. So whenever we have the drought, there are usually the outbreaks. A 70-year-old refuses to, because there's no roads there. It's a bit porous. You cannot tell a 70-year-old to get into a, motor, a motorbike and rush and give the, what is it called, the vaccines. But we have youths without the job. So I don't know what is the solution the Senate is working on, because most of our counties cannot do development. Because we end up like, there's even a county, I think, in Eastern. The 7 billion they got, you find like 5 billion is going to pay the salaries. And it's not for the youth. It's for people who've been there since the municipalities, who are willing very willing to uh, volunteer retirement, but are afraid because they are not sure whether their pension is there. So what would be the solution for this so that our youths can at least be absorbed into the workforce? Thank you. Thank you. As, as is your classmate, I'm his chairperson of Kenya Young Members of County Assemblies. So I have to say a word because as I stand here, as I stand here today, I'm I am saying that youths are capable in this country. In the last general election in 2017, I vied in Bungoma town with my party, Ford Kenya. When we went to the party nominations, I was new, I was a young man, I didn't understand. I lost the nominations, but I didn't give up. My party leader, Mwishmiwa Wetangula, called me as a young man and told me very clearly, we've seen the energy you've put to the party and we want you to support the party. And I want to assure you, my word is my bond. After the elections, he is going to nominate me. Am I nominated or not? I am. This is a sign that 
Mheshimiwa Moses Wetangula believes in the youth. And what I want just to encourage the young people who are here today. Let's change our mindsets as the young people of this country. We should fight for our own space because this nation is ours for the taking. No one is here to retire because if Baba has not retired to now, Wetaka not retire. <laughs> finally, finally, about the Luya unity. In the next few months, we are going to have the census. We know very clearly, we as lawyers, we have numbers more than the people of Central. Because uko kwetu, what wanaza? What wanaza? Uko kwetu nyumbani? What wanazana? So my young fellow lawyers who are here, I want to tell you and encourage you. When the censors are coming this August, tujitokeze kama vijana, tujiandikishe kwa censors, because after the censors, we are going to form a revolution because we know after the censors, the youth of this country, sisi kama vijana waluya toongoza, na wengine watufuate, na tufuatilie inchi, ili we form the next government of 2022. Thank you so much. Asa, asa, asa. Sasa yeye alipeana na fasi yake. Round two, sindio? Aya, uja maa, amesema wani wengi sana. Is it because of Mukomero? <laughs> okay, let's allow, let's, let's allow the debate to continue on this other side. It's a dialogue, and we can't have one-sided uh, uh, discussion. Let's, let, let yes. us take it back to the panel. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. In fact, I'm not going to take much, much, much more time. I'm going to ask the senator to respond to all those questions. I, and then we'll ask uh, Senator Abshirot. Asande sana, asande sana. Very interesting. That is not the only youth I have nominated. Hadad, Simama. Uyo Kijana. Ni nominated MCA wa Fort Kenya Kilifi County. Ni kijana si kijana. <laughs> now let me respond to a few things that uh, you raised. And I want to congr congratulate all of you for being candid, being to the point, and asking without any fear or favor. And that's the only way we can take this country forward. Whenever I go to any studio, I always tell whoever interviews me that there is no question you'll ask me that can embarrass me. There's no question you can ask me that I cannot answer. I have that confidence in me. And I can carry it to State House for you come next elections. Nomin I'll touch on some few things. My sister will deal with others. Senator Bshiro here is a testimony of recognition of youth and women. She's nominated by Kano Party as a youth and as a woman. And I can tell you without any fear of contradiction, she's one of the most brilliant women debaters in the Senate. <laughs> And for Eta to acknowledge you is not easy. <laughs> she knows I've told her even on the floor that she's good and she speaks well, factually, legally, and with decorum. You have asked many things. I want just to touch on a few. Ethnicity, per se, is not a problem. Everybody has an identity. There's no harm in being a Borana, a Rendile, or a Trukana, or a Maasai, or anybody, or a Mzungu. There's no harm. What is the harm is those who convolute the idea of ethnicity and use it to harm others and to oppress others. There is space for everybody. And being called Kamau or Wafu or Njoroge or Omondi or whatever, it's just a name. We must learn to appreciate each other as Kenyans. I have said many times before, the patriotic feeling in each one of you is such that as we sit here, if you hear that a, a person has been murdered in Vanga or Kibish, the feeling you have in you will be much stronger than when you hear that a tsunami has hit somebody in Malaysia because that is your fellow patriot. And we must embrace that. You young people have the future of this country. In politics, my friend, nobody will give you space. You must fight for it. 
There are no invitations in politics. You must fight for it. And you just tell us you are the majority, 70%. Why should the majority be oppressed by the minority? Knowingly. Stand up and be counted. I gave you an example of a girl in Bungoma, straight from most, no money, no nothing. She stood and convinced the electorate of 16,000 voters, and she beat 16 men. And she's an MCA. She graduated as an MCA. And many others can do that. We also have one from Kibabi University, a student leader. He's an MCA. He hasn't even graduated yet. And he's an MCA. So, Chanukene Bwana. Eh? Chanukene. Me, I support youths anywhere and everywhere. The way they come to me, we work together. Let's work together. When it comes to nominations, my sister here comes from a different party. In my party, disabled people and youths, we charge them 10% of what we charge other people for nomination fees. And nobody will go to parliament to pass a law to outlaw nomination fees. Parties are clubs. Each club has its own rules. A party can decide to have candidates without paying any nomination fees. It's up to them. But parties must run. Even this CMD we are sitting here, my party pays 70000 every year to CMD to make it function. Your party pays as well. So we need some money to run these parties and organizations that control our parties. The issue of how to manage our ethnicity. Let's borrow a leaf from Malaysia. In Malaysia, they have a very simple phenomenon in their constitution. They acknowledge their communities, their Malays, their Chinese, their Indians, their all manner of people there. But they have decreed in the constitution that when you share public slots, each community cannot get more than its aggregate percentage of the population of the country, period. If you are 8% of the population, there's no way you can justify occupying 45% of public slots and vice versa. And it works so well for Malaysia. Perhaps we should embrace it here so that we know if you are 21%, it's immoral to occupy 26% of public positions. If you are 6%, it's immoral to occupy 1% of public positions. That can work and it can help this country. What is important is we as the people of this country, united as one, fighting the vices that are destroying this country. I've had my good MCA here talking about the ballooning wage bill. The issue of the wage bill is a misnomer. It's an escape route. The government itself has told us that in a budget of three trillion, 30% is lost through corruption. 30%, meaning one trillion of our resources every year is stolen through corruption. How do you compare that with a wage bill that we are talking about? Number two, if you want to bring down the wage bill of any country, you do not do so by crying wolf everywhere. It is the private sector that grows to bring down the public engagement of employees. The reason everybody wants to work for government is because the private sector is not growing, the private sector is virtually dying, the private sector is not ticking. If we have Farming working well. Vets who finish university will not queue at a governor's office to be employed. He will move to any farm establishment and set up a private enterprise and thrive. Same with doctors, same with lawyers, same with everybody. So let's grow our private sector and the people to grow the private sector is not you. It is the government to put an enabling environment, resources and everything to make the private sector grow so that we can bring down the wage bill. That wage bill is just a mirage. The amount of money stolen in one single transaction called SGR is enough to pay the civil servants of Kenya for three years. 
So where is uh, the wage bill that we're crying about? Lastly, before I give my sister to speak, the two-third gender rule bill in the house, the young girl here asked. That bill has come four times. And uh, gender in this country for the time being is understood to mean favoring women. But what you said is absolutely correct. We reach a stage where it's men who will need to be favored if the women take over. Let's look forward to that day. <laughs> that bill in the house, some of the people who have been resisting it are women, the beneficiaries of the bill. Even the last vote, some of them walked away to create a quorum hitch so that it's not voted for. The parties, two parties in this country can raise a two-third majority in the house. The two parties are in what is called the handshake. If they believe in this country, why didn't they whip their members to vote for this bill? The majority of the members who walked away are from the handshake group. And the bill collapsed. So if you think at 2022, Ule Rafiki Mukonai Ako Hapa. And it was a idea of party yokit by eight in the morning. Ya muisho kabisa uyo kijana. You know, I didn't come here to discuss my brother Raila Odinga, and I will not be dragged into parochial politics. But I want you to live here knowing that my brother Raila leads a party called ODM. I lead Ford Kenya. Musalia leads ANC. Kalonzo leads Wiper. Those are the parties that we were in the coalition. If you, your facts are correct, then compare with these facts. In Bungoma County, where I come from, ODM has four MCS and no MP and nothing else. It's led by Raila. In Kakamega, ODM has a governor and two MPs. That is all. And the, some MCS, ANC has the majority. In Transoya, ODM has only one MCA and one MP. The rest are either mine or others. So where is that strength? Don't live in cloud nine. <laughs> Come back to the ground and look at things more rationally. In any case, I don't want to become the president of Kenya because I'm a lawyer. I don't want to become a lawyer president. I want to become the president of Kenya because I've got the capacity, I've got the ability, and I've got the wherewithal to take this country from where it is to a different level. <laughs> Support me and you'll see the difference. Thank you. That's a politician for you. But I saw <laughs> Senator shaking her head when uh, Senator Wetangula said that the women did not support the two-thirds yeah. gender oh, yeah. rule. Yeah. Not, uh, some did not. Is it well, true that they did not? Yeah, I'll speak to that. Thank you very much, Senator Weta. I am no longer youth in my Peter threshold, but thank you for... for but uh, thank you very much for the kind words. Now, let me just talk to any of the ones that Senator Weta has actually handled most of them. Uh, there was a question by Diana about ethnic antagonism and how we, we turn against each other. Now, one thing I'd like to say for youth... I think right now, our, there's two tribes, the haves and have-nots. Is that not correct? Who is giving you something because of, of your, your, your tribe? The rich are on this side, and you, unemployed youth, have a tribe of your own, which is of the poverty. So let's not talk about the Luya nation. and the, We are in the poverty nation. And we should be thinking, how would we get ourselves out of this poverty index? Because the minute we start thinking, and today, you know, I have been studying a little bit of politics since I got into politics. And one thing that has been said, every politician has their youth owners. Is that correct or not? So if we stop being owned, because that is modern day slavery, when there's, there's, there's a campaign actually going right now, I think, and the slavery is in our minds. Why do we think we have to be owned by somebody, as women or as youth, for us to see light of day? 
And somebody asked another question about what are you doing to make sure the youth get out of um, this? Don't wait for anybody. Don't even wait for Santa Weta to get to State House 2022. You yourself, leadership is about individual action. If every one of us does the one thing, takes one action, it will collectively become youth empowerment. So for me, really, do not, in fact, the questions you ask make me sad because they say they're still thinking that I can, how, I don't even have money, I'm, I'm just like you. The other day I was also just sitting here asking the politicians these questions. But if each one of us, leadership is about individual action. What action will you take today? And by coming here, you've done just that, and I congratulate all of you. But do not wait for us. I promise you, once we get into that house, yes, we'll do our best. But politics about interest. Everybody will be now looking at, where do I fix myself? So please, let's get into the habit of, first of all, liberating ourselves from this modern day slavery of being owned by politicians. The, 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 the young man who was standing there was putting a, for, uh, a case forward for Raila Odinga. He didn't put a case forward for himself or for a fellow youth, right? This is the kind of mind slavery that will not get us anywhere. Now, um, again, I was a bit sad that why do we even as youth have to even talk about tribes and Luya unity and, and, and what have you? Again, let's get out of that. And, but somebody said something good. Tribe is not bad. It's our source of identity. It is what is giving us our way of communication. It is what is giving us our values. And it's not bad to be a tribe or to belong to a tribe. A source of identity, our culture. We should be proud of our tribes, actually, and the good in it. But the ethnic, the, the, the negative ethnicity, the one that tells you somebody else is worse than you, the parochialism, the one that tells you this tribe is this and you're superior than it, is what is bad. But ethnic, our ethnic identity is a beautiful thing. When you watch this country, the colors, the culture, the language, the diversity, it should be a source of wealth for us. So do not ever look at your tribe as if it's something bad. Don't even try to deny what tribe you are. It's beautiful, it's different, it gives you your identity, your culture. It is the negative one, the one that you're told by politicians, by us, that you're better than the other person. Nobody is better than another person. Every human being is equal before God and in this constitution. Now, uh, then there's other things we were told about um, the women walking out of parliament. Senator Wetangula, I am afraid I'll disagree with you. Yes, there may be women who may, may not have been there, but it's not true that women walked out. What happened was that the women learned that it will fail regardless. So they went out in protest because they knew it was going to fail. Senator Wetangula, you will bear me witness. When government or when the leadership of the house wants to pass something, it will be done, even if it means switching off the voting system. And saying the no's that have screamed loudest, the eyes have it that didn't even utter a word. There was no political goodwill. In fact, when the women walked out, of course, there's no time when we'll have 100% because, you know, people are human beings. When the women walked out, it was trying to, to, to try and get people into the house. I, I don't, of course, sit in the National Assembly, but I know that. Again, it's not true that the women don't want it, but one of the things we learned is that through this process, that the two-thirds gender bill was never going to see light of day, and this is why then, maybe in our wisdom, in their wisdom, the women somehow tried to, 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 to do that. That said... There's always this narrative about the women are the worst enemies of each other, the youth are the worst enemies. There's some truth to it, but it's also a narrative that we must start to rubbish. I have been supported by a woman, and, and contrary to popular belief that people who are nominated have uh, girlfriends of party leaders, I came on my own right as a, as, as a professional and with a lot of experience in, 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 in the workplace. So, Again, these are some of the narratives that I think we need to look at. Then there was somebody um, talked about oh, um, youth and how Canaan was two people. Again, that should be a lesson to us as youth and as, I mean, to, 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 to you as youth and as women. 
The promises that politicians make are just that, promises. And see such time as we see action, take your own individual action. Uh, about oversight of counties and devolution and, and uh, what we're doing about it as, as Senate, we're doing everything. Is it already working? Perhaps not because it's a journey. We have, as, as I said, we're looking at the budget. We are fighting for more resources to counties. It's, un, it's unacceptable that the national government should take the lion's share of the, of the revenue. I know there was a question that was handed to me about the CRA formula that is punitive to counties that perhaps are not as developed as others. And the, the formula being based on population can be punitive to counties like in northern Kenya that are so vast. And So we are also looking at all these kinds of things to say every kilometer... Um, Finance for youth and affirmative action of the 30%. I think, again, there's a problem there. There's, there's legislation, but it's an implementation that is not working very well. And that the issues around uh, tendering, we, we are looking at actually, and as, as, the, uh, as Senator Weta has said, we are here to pick these issues from you. And then we'll go and look at what is possible legislatively, what is possible in all ways to see how that can be done. But you're right, the 30% is not working for women or for for youth. We must find a different way uh, to make sure that people are empowered. Now, I'm told, I'm told that uh, something you should be aware, you're not required to provide all these uh, police abstracts and good, uh, certificate of good health, any, uh, good conduct anymore. There was, there was a motion in, in, in parliament that actually voted against these things. So nobody should be asking you for it, but I think that needs to be... It's not that... Now, again, there's a, there's a, let me just tell you about this motion and then there's the legal document, legal, um, there's a, a, a law, bill. We need to move it to become a, a piece of legislation. But in terms of the initial um, discussions through a motion, that has already been done. So it's up to us now to take it to the next level to make it a binding law. And this is what we shall work on. But in terms of the initial stage of a motion to abolish these things, this has already been done. But of course, again, as you say, it's not working and we will make sure that it, go, it becomes a piece of legislation. Um, I think that is all of, is there anything? Help. Again, I think the issue of help is something that is affecting all of us and it's, it's really unacceptable that we don't have work, but we are expected to pay help. So it's something that as legislators we're going to look at and we will definitely, I don't have an answer to that now, but we'll definitely look into it and make sure that um, we, we do that. Um, now, but for me, even in terms of two-thirds gender or not, I think it's about time we start now just fighting for our space. I know you've said it's about money. We are the ones accepting that money. But what if we took the money and just voted differently. Who is in that booth with us? Who is, who is in that booth with us? Let's just be honest. What is it? What's the fear? Let me, let me just hear. What is the fear? That somebody will come and say, Niliona What is the fear? Huh? How? There's no assassination. Who will assassinate? Who will know how you vote? It's a secret ballot. Is that not a secret ballot? They are ethical. Take the money. Fine, if you've, if you've taken the money. If... Uh, who would know? They're saying they're agents. Who are the agents anyway? Nisisi too. Huh? So in fact, and somebody is saying, let's look at ourselves. You know, the minute we start liberating ourselves, the minute we start seeing this problem actually is half of it can be solved by us. Fine, fine. I'm not disputing that money is important. I have been told myself, you're not electable because you don't have money and you, took, you talk too much truth. You're not telling people what they want to hear. Okay? Which is fine. I ate even before I came to parliament. But what if, what if we started focusing not on the minute, you, if you want to solve a problem, do not give power to others. But the way I'm seeing, we have given power to others. We think that our lot will change only if somebody else does it. We think that is the politician to say. The questions just read like that. What are you doing about uh, ethnic antagonism by youth? It is you. I should ask you back. What are you doing yourselves? Why wouldn't you? You're very smart people. Why wouldn't you know that 
I am not bad because I come from a different tribe. So, what is it that I will do? And I come from the remotest area of this country. For you who is in the other corner. And yet, so let's start taking back power for ourselves. The minute we start becoming, giving power to others is the day we cannot move. So let's start doing that. But that's easier said than done. And I accept and really I know that perhaps it's not... Um, it's not something that, um, you know, um, is, is probably easy. But the minute we liberate our, our minds, we will we'll be a step closer. We are here to listen to you because you gave us the platform on which we can go and legislate. And we are, we've taken a lot of notes. As you can see, Senator Weta has a big booklet and I have a small one, but I've taken as much as I can. We will definitely do that. And that's why we brought ourselves here. But ultimately, even for legislation... And, and again, the wage bill, let me just, five million people, there's, there's about six million people in the way, in, in, you know, employed. Senator Weta, the private sector actually has done its bit. Out of that, it's only 700,000 people that work for government. So the bulk of the workers are still with, with the private sector. But why is the public sector so attractive? Because every rich person we know is from the public sector. Everybody who is driving a big car is from the public sector. So in fact, people are shunning employment in the private sector because you're, you will be made to account for things, you will be made to arrive on time, you will be made to do these things. Let's start value, having a value system that believes in hard work. And we are to blame as politicians to, to create an impression that it's the shortcuts to really making and uh, creating wealth. Public sector is just 700,000 people. And now with counties, perhaps maybe 800, let me just add another, another 100,000. So again, but the wedge bill is, is, is half the story. As Senator Tangula has said, the corruption is where, you know, the problems lie. That said, we as, uh, we will make sure, of course, that we, enough allocation is made to development and not just everything going to, to uh, as Senate. I think we're looking at that. This year, there's a slight nominal increase of about, it's about 16% right now at, as part of the, the, the latest budget. But again, as Senator Weta has said, it is based on a percentage of a very old figure of 2013 audited accounts. Again, we will try and make sure that we are we're working with not history, but with, the, with, with what is happening now. I think I'll stop here. There's lots more, perhaps, but somehow I'm, um, I, I wrote something that I can't read here. But that said, again, uh, let's be on the table in terms of referendum. Because in the referendum, we must influence the, the questions as well. But again, Senator Weta, perhaps what we need to do is to create and facilitate uh, somewhere where the youth can give us all this information, which can then be fed back into the, into the mainstream. I don't know, have you met the BBI team? Has, have the youth met the BBI team? Uh, the Building Bridges Initiative. Not it. Okay. Anyway, we'll pass, we'll pass that information as well. If the youth feel like you haven't been given enough time to influence the process, if you need more, we will definitely take it back to them. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I'm going to do a very quick... Mukosawa. Wacheni ni wambie. Tulieni, tulieni. Tulia mzae. Kachini. Tulia. 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 Number one, first things first. Youth agenda wa organize kuna pizza. Sindio? Hakuna pizza leo. Nini vipi? <laughs> Walikuwa metu jenga na pizza jena ni kuna fikiri kuna pizza leo. Anyway, a very quick one. The Honorable Rafael Tuju will be here next. So, muna jua Tuju ni gava. Sindio? So, maswali zote za gava zinakuja. Bado tuko hapa. So, musitoke. Alafu, baadae, Senator Sakaja pia takuwa hapa hapa. This is the People Dialogue Festival. So, Maswali Kwagava, all these uh, uh, state actors must be asked questions. I don't want to, do a, to talk a lot. I wanted to say all, only those announcements. And then, we have a performance by Nyota Ndogo, who is in the house. So, there's a lot in store. I'm going to take it back to the senator and uh, the moderator. Thank you.
I will uh, finish up with one or two things. Number one, young Kenyans. Our country is choking with corruption. Our country is choking with corruption. The president is crying. Everybody else is crying. You know what we must do? This country must destroy all sanctuaries of corruption. Regardless of who you are, if you go to Brazil, one of the most popular presidents in the world, Lula, is in jail for 12 years. If you go to Korea, there is a woman who came here three years ago as a president. She's in jail for 24 years. We must jail everybody found guilty of corruption. If we have to reclaim our country. If we have to reclaim our country. Lastly, today is International Women's Day. And we must celebrate our women. I want just to share two tweets I sent out this morning about our women. And this is what I said in the morning. The first one, I joined the women folk in celebrating the International Women's Day. Governments and persons in authority need not be reminded that women's rights are human rights. And that the equality between men and women is not anybody's option. Heko to mom, to wife, to sis, to daughters. My second tweet. My mother brewed busa and distilled changa to see us through school. And that is a fact. Having herself stopped school at standard two, she dutifully checked our report cards to see what position you got and punished you promptly if you did not get a good position. She's 90 today, and at 90, she remains my icon. And I celebrate her like we celebrate all the women of this world. Young people, the future is not about you standing alone. The future is about a partnership. Youth is a transient slot in human life. You are a child, you are a youth, you will become an old person in the future. Whatever you do at whatever level in your life is as important as what somebody else is doing. Don't say that as a youth, don't profile yourself. You are a youth today, tomorrow you are a mother, next day you are a grandmother. So this transient position and slot in your life is when you are most energetic. Speak without fear or favor. Act without fear or favor. Fear no one except God and the law. And let's save our country. Don't be a lamenting team. Be a proactive team that will stand up and walk. You don't have guns. You don't have prisons. You don't have anything. But you have a voice. Walk to the office of the president, to parliament, and tell them, including me, that you ought to have done this, you haven't done it, that's a dereliction of duty, reconsider your position. Those with conscience will do so. To shikamane, to jenge injietu. There are no angels that will come to build Kenya except ourselves. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you so much, Senator. Mm-hmm. Cheki, 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 cheki. Goja, goja, goja. Goja, tulia, my friend. Goja, goja, tulia. We will listen. We will listen. It's a dialogue. It's dialogue, isn't it? Yeah, it's dialogue. So relax. Relax, relax, my friend. Relax. Let me, let me, let me say this. You know, yeah, yeah, I'm, give, I'm giving him. But, lazima tuelewane. Lazima tuelewane, all right? I said when we were starting that we are not going to shout. I said that, Sindio. We are not going to shout. If you have a question, you ask. You don't shout. That is very clear. All right? So you don't call people names. Okay? Discipline is paramount. 
That is number one. Number two, even that is discipline. Number two, we have timelines for everything that we are doing. All right? We would want the senator to be here to ask, but he's also busy. We have to consider several things. All right? We would want everyone to keep speaking. But there are other leaders who have to come in and you have to engage with them. All right? So since the senator has intervened, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Come down, come down. I'm going to give you an opportunity. Actually, there were about, and then I had seen we, these people. They really wanted. So can you agree that we will, we'll do this? We'll do this. Four, just, just relax, man. Come. Relax. Yes. Let me, let me, let me do this. Let me, let me do this. I'm going to take, we, we cannot take everybody. That is a fact. We cannot take everybody. Bro, I said, I'm talking about discipline. Have I called you? I've not called you. No, no, no. I've not called you. Go back. So I'm going to take two. These two. Three. All right. Cool. I'm going to take three. We cannot, we cannot take everybody. We cannot exhaust it. So, so uh, let's take these three. I will invite the senator, uh, the honorable Tuju is here. So I want him to come in. But we have to finish this session. Sasa. So watch our Ulize Swali, Wakimaliza, we see what happens next. But let's maintain this. This is in Vijana to maintain discipline. Sasa. So these guys will ask a question and then we finish this off. Take a take a equal to swali moja moja na waomba sasa. Yeah. Equal to swali moja moja araka araka. Uh, abarizenu vijana. Mimi swali yangu ni direct kwa waheshimiwa. Na ni about extrajudicial killing. I'm execution. <laughs> Nafikiri wakati tunakuwaga campaign vijana ndo tunatumika gasana. Na ikifika time mheshimiwa ameingia parliament kitu ya kwanza anafanya ni kufunga vio na kuchange roots sasa eh, ni kihesabu saa hizi zile kesi nimehandle za extrajudicial execution ni mingi kushinda uwezo wangu mbunge wangu si muoni sawa sawa na sidhani kama nyinyi wenye mko kwa senate ama wenye wako kwa bunge hawajui kama vijana wana madoa ovyo ovyo nyinyi kama wabunge kama senate Mumefanya nini? Mumezungumzia nini? Sijaisikia mmezungumzia mambo extrajudicial execution vijana daily. Hata sasa hivi vile tunazungumza kuna karawa wamechapa kijana. Sijui kama nizungumze kizungu ndio tutaelewana ama nizungumze Kiswahili. Eh lakini warakisha. Sawa. Eh warakisha kidogo. It is painful. Demona arakisha ndo demo, we've been there to, together with this fight. Eh? Yeah. Demona arakisha ndo demo vijana wanaarakishwa mtaani wa kimadwa. So mimi nataka ku get it from this uh, honorable members uh, waniambie mimi kama kijana mimi kama kijana mnani protectaje kutokana na extrajudicial execution Yo number one. number two, approach ya corruption approach ya corruption tumebaki tu tukizungumzia corruption ya do alafu tunapewa tu lecture oh watu wafungwe sijui nini tuambieni tu honesty Tuweke tu kweli juu ya meza. Corruption haita pigano na style ya kusema sijui nani afungwe. Turudi tu kwa morals. Turudi ni tu kwa morals, tuangaliane mimi na wewe. Kama wewe ni corrupt kuanzia kwa boma yako, ukipewa seat itakuwaje. Sasa I want to request uh, unless unless Kidogo that question was directed to senator. Yes. That's the only time we'll allow you to speak because let, let me give him one second. Take okay. a take. Thank you, sir. My question goes direct to Honorable Tangula. In the previous regime from 2013, you are really criticizing the former governor, who was not your, your party colleague. But currently, you are having now Honorable Wamangati. I've never had even one case. The other case, Tulikwa, Ya Wilbaro. He is just here. I want you to clarify. When you mutuaka kiwa kwa power, umu criticize. Wengine akiwa unam criticize and you are fighting corruption. Ah uh, asante sana kwa ina pasi. Ah uh, so mi, mi swali yangu ni ya policy kikamni wasanii. Mimi ni msanii. Um wasanii I think wamekuwa held hostage to 
kumekuwa na music policy yenye imekuwa hanging for years right which for me if i kwa music policy na kwa arts policy right so um the thing is imekuwa ni kama carrot go dangled to anytime politicians wanahitaji wasanii for kurali watu ndio ina bring you up unaona which hiyo policy inafaa kuwa ni ku regulate na ku safeguard rights za wasani because uh, whatever is coming from outside na kama cheap alternative and so atwezi compete so unakuta muziki yenye inachezwa ni nje movies zinachezwa ni za nje so you can keep up unaona so for me na uliza what, what 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 is to be done because pia majority ya wasani wanatoka wako predominantly from the youth groups ndio so like what is going to be done about that Thank you very quick answers. Thank you very much Mr Senator My good uh, young man about extrajudicial killings my distinguished senator colleague here can bear me witness I have brought a question to the floor of the senate I have moved a motion on the floor of the senate to condemn extrajudicial killings in my life as a lawyer you may look at my history even in 1982 Ochuka, Okumu, Oburu, and the rest who overthrew Moi for 10 hours. I was their lawyer. I defended their rights. Some were hanged, some are still living. My law firm represents pro bono. When Kenyans were renditioned to Uganda, I worked with Alamini Kimadi, you probably know him, to bring some of them back. I have been at the center of these things, my friend. Asiyekujua hakudhamini lakini unadhamana. Kwa ule kijana wa Bungoma nafikiri perhaps comes from Bungoma. I fight corruption in each and every form and manifestation practiced by whoever. I fought Lusaka when he bought wheelbarrows and I am focusing on Wangamati if he does anything silly I'll go down on him like a ton of bricks. Don't worry about that. Our duty is to fight corruption and I agree with that young man the shortage of morality in this country. Ata nyinyi vijana. I have sons of your age. When you talk with young people nobody talks about earning money in this country anymore. We talk about making money, making deals. Nobody wants to talk about I earned money. You are sweat. Let's go back to the basics. When you see the thieves driving Range Rovers in town, we think theft is the way of life. We must change. How do we change? We must destroy the sanctuaries of shortcuts of corruption. And don't speak with anger, my son. When you get angry, you lose the point. You must remain level-headed for people to understand you. When you are angry, even those who want to understand you dismiss you. Take my number and look for me I'll help you track down extrajudicial killings 0722 Yes 0722 Yes 51 And this is the phone it's not a phone carried by my bodyguard It's not a phone left in the office with my secretary. It's the phone I use. Call me anytime. I will be there for you. And remember me 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ya wasani, wapi yo msani? If you watch the proceedings of the Senate, there is a, a matter on the floor, in fact brought by Senator Sakaja who I'm told is coming here to protect your production to protect your industry to protect your innovations so that every single time your music is played by any radio any tv or in any public place you must earn from your sweat there is a law coming through the senate to protect you thank you thank you so much thank you so much let's give them a big hand clap Let's give ourselves a big hand clap. I know at times as we see you catch lakini tumeambiwa tusikuwa tukikatch tu sana. Thank you so much a hand over to you. Thank them. you very much. Thank you very much Senator Weta and Senator Shiro. Asanteni sana. This transition is going to be very very smooth. 
Thank you. Always remember Mundu Humundu. Asante sana, Senator Shiro. Thank you very much. We're going to do this transition very, very fast. As they greet each other, uh, the Honorable Rafael Tuji will take his, uh, his seat. All right? As they greet each other. So, uh, you, you, you says he has 10 minutes. So we'll give him 20. Hi, I want to give this opportunity. It's been a fire, eh? Simuko na moto, mama. Hey, hey, hey. Hii moto, is it power? Is it power? As I told you, we are bringing state actors here. We are bringing state actors here. Na kazi yao ni kutujibu maswali. Sawa? Remember, remember to Facebook, at, on Twitter, at CMD Kenya, at CMD Kenya, the hashtag is People dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the Honorable Rafael Tuju is here. Uh, Rafael Tuju. Karibu Sani, wewe ni serikali. The People Dialogue Festival is the hashtag. All right? Uh, as, as, as my, as, as the, the, we set up the stage for this to happen. All right? I am told that we're going to invite. Uh, Diana Sifuna is the next moderator. Diana Sifuna is the next moderator. She's also going to moderate another session beyond this. This session with the Honorable Rafael Tuju is very brief. All right? So I will request once again. Tumambiwa hapa usikasirike. Ukipewa nafasi ya kuliza suwali, uliza suwali specific. Ndiyo tulize maswali mingi. Mwishimiwa azikava zote. And now I, I present my chairman. At uh, the CMD, I'm in, I'm invite Rafael Tuju. I'm Jambo Tena. My my big business, my other profession is to usher people in. So allow me, although I'm not being paid to do it, I love ushering guests into the serious forums like this. I'm Jambo Tena. Uh, in the house, we have none other than my great friend. We have a story with him that uh, at one point I was an orphan in my community. And he was an orphan in his community, but the two orphans converged and we conquered the, the exclusion and we got what we wanted because, like Rafael Tuju will tell you his experience, he focuses on the ball and he never winks until he hits the jackpot. From his experience, consistency and principal engagement in what you believe in will deliver you. That I can share with you. Amidst all Odds, he has stood up and strong. And always where he stands, he wins. Next time, Raphael, I will be behind you. That's for sure. I know kuna, kuna Mazuri where Raphael is. He is the Secretary General of a big party. And he's very good in molding parties. From now Kenya, he was a chairman. And I about Mother Karua, the lady who spoke to us in the auditorium. He moved on to PNU. He formed government. Great man, I can tell you. He moved on TNA, URP. He formed government. Can you can you clap for him, guys? Hey, you have never seen him do that. So you come and meet me to get on and then start telling us about him again. Like today, I can't angle him. I'm ending. I can't song him well. But TNA Jubilee, I can't go on Jubilee. Pay box. You can't do any other car. You must be Missouri, son. We want to know what secret he has to do and tell these guys how you can mentor them. But his rallying call is you don't have to make money through black, black, black market, black avenues. You can get your money by working hard. His principle is morality. He believes in moral uprightness. Put your hands together for a great man, Rafael Tuchu, Secretary General of the Jubilee Party. Na minister katika serikali ya jubili. Kwa ni mutadu? Vijana. Hoye. Vijana, hoye. Are you happy? Are you happy with the discussions? Mefraia jo, mefraia. Ukweli. Mnasikika? 
Sauti zetu zinasikika? Mimi nimesikia mtu mmoja by the sauti yake inasikika. Si ndio? Sauti yako imesikika? Ilisikika na yule seneta mwingine, si ndio? Sasa unataka kujua kama sauti yako itasikika huku kwingine. Political parties, vijana. Vijana, are we together? Yes. Sawa, karibu sana Seneta Tuju. I was very worried about making your introduction. Sorry. I was very worried about making the introduction to you. Yeah, yes, si Seneta. Sekjen. Si yes. Sekjen. It's okay. Watu fanya makosa kwa nini? Pole, pole, Sekjen. Because you have done so much uh, for the democratic space in Kenya. We have watched you from the time you were in primary school. You are you are journey in this political space. Your passion for moral justice, as um, the chairman has mentioned, it is very noble, your course, what it is. Um, you've not been inconsistent. What we have seen in our leaders is the lack of consistency, consistency in the policies or the values they uphold as leaders. So, hapa leo vijana wa mekuja, kama youth agenda ime convene vijana, tusikie kutoka kwenu na pia mtusikie sauti zetu, ili tuwe pamoja katika ile uongozi wenu. Whether it's in political parties, whether it is in government, now that you are here, karibu sana. So, um, should we start with questions, Amatu Mulize, about youth inclusion? What youth inclusion, what have you done in your party, in your space, in your leadership, to ensure that there's youth inclusion? First of all, um, is it afternoon? Good afternoon young people. Um, I wasn't expecting this, so I was not very prepared to say too much. But I can make a few remarks um, by way of opening. Yes. Then I can answer the questions. Is that okay for you? Yes, uh, first of all, I just want to tell you that uh, we live in very interesting times. And I also want to tell you that you are very, very important in this country. I also want to tell you where did the rain start beating us in terms of the international context. May I stand? Okay, thank you. In the 1980s and 1990s, Kenya had the highest rate of population increase in the whole world, 4.2%. How many of you knew that? Yes? Kenya had the highest rate of population increase in the whole world. Unfortunately, during that time, the economy was not growing at the same rate that the population was growing. Also during that time, our governance structure had problems. We didn't have the democratic space that we have now, and there were a lot of sanctions from the international community in the economic front. So in many respects, things fell apart. Our roads fell apart. Our roads fell apart. Our infrastructure fell apart. Our economy fell apart. And unfortunately, that is the time when you people were born. There is no country in the history of mankind that have had the kind of rate of population increase that we have in this country, we had in this country, that has gone on and become stable. Virtually, any country which has had the type of population increase that we had, if they did not have an economic growth to deal with that population increase, they ended up in a revolution, violent one. And the first one, which is known to many people, is the case of Iran. In 1979, they had their youth population bulge and they ended up with a revolution. 
Recently, within your living memory, we had the situation which busted out in Tunisia. A young man who had done computer science could not get a job. He was selling in the streets. Then the Kanjo people came and overturned his fruits. And that is all he was re relying on. He burnt himself. There was a riot. And the whole of that region had what is called the Arab Spring. Is this making sense to you guys? All right? So the problems that we have here is because of a multiplicity of structural issues. I'll put that in one corner for you people to appreciate. Of course, there are various reasons why we had that highest rate of population increase in the whole world. It was because of universal vaccination against various diseases, uh, antibiotics, availability, good health care during the first 10 years of Kenya's independence and so forth. More children survived, and therefore, the population increased very fast. Put that in one corner. The next corner I want to tell you is that this country, Kenya, is very unique in the whole of Africa. This is the only country that those who are in the last meeting where I was across should forgive me for repeating this. This is the only country in Africa where you have the four races of Africa converge. When I'm talking about races in Kenya, I'm not talking about Indians and whites and Arabs. I'm talking about races as you'd see in Asia. For example, when you see an Arab, you know that's an Arab. He's Asian, but he's Arab. When you see an Indian, you know this is an Indian. He's Asian, but he's Indian. When you see a Chinese, you know this is Chinese. He's Asian, but he's Chinese race. In Africa, we have at least four races. All of them are represented in Kenya. In this room, you can tell who a Somali is just by looking. They're a different race. They're Africans, but they're a different race. You can tell a Borana when you see one. And you can tell a Nilot when you see one. And you can tell a Bantu very often when you see one, except in areas where there's been a lot of cross marriages. So you can see the Luyas and the Luos beginning to look the same, the Kisis and the Luos. But if you see a typical South Sudanese, eh? tall, black, almost blue like me, it's kind of obvious. Are we together? Now, to bring all these races into one country, then compound this with religion, then you have a recipe for disaster in terms of conflict, in terms of people not being able to live together. And in this country, I can tell you we're very lucky. You may not believe it, but I'll give you an example which will make you realize how lucky we are. Within living memory, there are people who are alive today who are alive in 1939 to 1945 when the tribes of Europe were killing each other. They killed 45 million. The Second World War killed 45 million. It was an ethnic tribal war of the Germans against the French, against the English, against the Russians. and It was a tribal war. In Kenya, we had our tribal wars recently. In 2008, we killed 1,300 people. So I think you should understand the challenges that we have, even in the political arena. I can tell you the biggest challenge we have in this country today is ethnic polarization. And before we deal with pol ethnic polarization, we are almost wasting our time talking about corruption. Because as soon as you begin to deal with corruption, it takes an ethnic dimension. 
And yet, we are most of us in denial. All the political parties here involved here today, if you don't know which party belongs to which ethnic group, then you are being dishonest as a Kenyan, including all of you here. That's the truth. Before we solve that, we are wasting our time. Yet, my hope is in you guys. Every weekend, I see young Kenyans marrying across the tribe. You are the only hope we have to address this challenge. In my generation, those of us who dared, we were such, such minority like him, such minority that they simply steamrolled on us. I was a member of parliament for Arieda. I could not survive not being in a Luo-centric party, irrespective of what I did for them. Yeah? So that is the challenge we have. So we can pretend, we can talk, we can say all whatever we want to say, but that is the truth. All right? So that's all I want to say in terms of opening remarks. Thank you very much. Now I can answer the questions. Guys, isn't it interesting that when we stood up to ask the first question to the former panelists, that we asked about ethnic antagonism, right? That was the question that actually came out first. And maybe a challenge that they posed to us as young people, they asked us, why are you asking questions all the time? So probably when you stand up in this session and you have questions for Mweshimiwa, please, could you bring suggestions? Say, against corruption, as a young person, this is what I think will help curb it. Against ethnic antagonism, this is what I think will curb the problem. Is that okay? Okay, so I think the first question we had already asked um, just about youth inclusion in what you have done um, in your tenure and what you continue to do now to support this transitional phase for us because we're not going to be young, be young forever. We, it's a very transitional phase. We change. Yes, thank you. Well, you know, when I start saying what we have done for the youth, it's going to sound like propaganda, <laughs> right? And I don't want to be in the propaganda business. The first thing I want to say is that 70% of Kenyans are below 35. So Kenya is, in essence, a young population. So when we are talking about empowering the youth, I'm actually thinking we must be talking about empowering everybody because you are the majority. And unfortunately, you are so, young people are so marginalized. And I mean, all young people are facing very, very serious problems in this country. Whatever we do, it's a very small. It's not enough. I'm the first one to admit that to you. I can read here we have Chris Mark from Laikipia, the nominated member of parliament. All right? We are very proud of him. Hussein, is Hussein is here from Garissa. Very, we did a very thorough job in making sure that they had the right profile, they could really contribute. We have uh, Njoki from Morana, where is she? Is Njoki around? Yeah, there. All right. Now, but it's not enough. Because every year, every year, including this year, I think you've seen that we tried to get one million kids who did standard eight to get to form one. That has never happened in the history of this country. Since 1964, our exam system has been what you call a sieving or elim elimination exam. It is, in fact, in 1966, it is President Kenyatta who banned what was called the CCE, eh? was it CEE? Common Entrance Exam, CEE. -E. There was an exam at Standard 4. And at Standard 4, if you didn't pass that exam, you couldn't go to Standard 5. What had informed that policy 
that if you didn't pass exam at standard four, you didn't go to standard five. It was simply a saving mechanism because there were not enough classes in standard five. But how a standard four kid is about nine years old. How do you decide a standard four child to be stupid and should not go ahead with education? Likewise, this policy of ensuring that every primary kid goes to secondary. A primary school child is finishing primary at age 12 and age 13. How do you condemn that child that now they are stupid, they cannot go on with education? And therefore, you basically block their chances to become anything in life except being in the margins of society as laborers, as casual workers, and so forth. And let me tell you, if you go to the UK or the United States, where we borrow our education system from, they do not have standard eight exams for the last many years. And unfortunately, those who are privileged, like myself, my kids don't know what a standard eight exam is because they didn't do it in the, in the US system where they went because I was, I was out of the country that time. So standard eight exam is for the poor. Okay? So for this administration, this president, to, make, to insist that every child who has done standard eight must go to form one is one of the biggest achievements that this country has done. You may not understand it. It is not getting headlines, but for me, it is the most important thing that this president has done for the sake of the youth of this country. The last time something was like that was done was in 1966 when his father banned CEE. And when it was, when it was being banned then as of now, as, as is now, the teachers didn't understand. How are we going to have kids in standard five who have not gone through CEE? And that's why today some teachers, including unionist, unionists, are saying how are we going to have all these kids in form one who have not gone through standard eight exams? Absolute nonsense. All right? So for me, that is the biggest one. But we have challenges. If when these kids who have done, gone to Form 1 now will be doing Form 4 in four years' time, we'll be having one million kids doing the transition to adulthood. According to computer simulations that we have, 60%, 60% of the young people we have today between ages 18 to about 26, 27, they will never have a job in their lives unless we industrialize. Because there is no precedent anywhere in the world in the history of mankind where they have made the transition from being a poor country to an advanced country or a affluent country where everybody has a job unless they make the transition from being an agra agrarian agra agrarian uh, society to an industrial society. And that's why we are having the big four, and one of the pillars of those big four is industrialization. If only we could spend a little bit more time in ensuring that we actually make moves in those areas, then we'll make the difference for the youth. Anything else like I don't know how many youth positions are available for nomination, how many youth positions are available for MCAs and I don't know, MPs and senators, one from each party, tokenism, nothing else. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Sek Jen. So this is from the party that is in government. Yeah, Vijana, ni sasa ni wakati wakuuliza maswali. I don't know who's going to help me distribute the mic. Uh, please ask as many questions as I'm possible. Here. I think let me take. Okay. There are so many questions. 
we, let's take as much as possible. Just, just give him a pen and paper so that he can be able to, uh, to, to just jot them down. The, you can see all those forests of hands. We'll start with the gender. Okay, Franzi Harper. Thank you. My name is Mildred from Youth Agenda. Um, I hear what you have said about, you know, one or two positions for young people being tokenism. I mean, I understand that. But how are we expected to make any meaningful engagement if we're not at the table? It's fantastic. Jubilee has nominated uh, young MCAs, but it is a constitutional requirement. I personally took the time to go through the Jubilee Manifesto. And one of the main things that came out of the manifesto is that 30% of all appointments and allocations in terms of budget will go to young people. Because you can't be talking about 70% of the population and they're not at the table. However, we have also seen the appointment list by the president. Three out of 120 appointments made at any one time does not equal 30%. Appointments have just been made this past few uh, weeks. Not even one young person sitting at the table. How do you expect us to make decisions at the table while we are on the menu? Hands up. We'll take one on this side, Mohesh. We'll take one on this other side. Katikati, go happy. Katikati. Uko Nyuma, yes. I can see that hand up there. Yamsani. Alafu, hapa. Where's balance? Where's balance for, for better? Balance for better hapo. Uh, Miss Ndoto. Na hapo. Ah, yeah. Mwishimwa. Tuanza na hapa. Thank you. My name is Kalonde. I come from Makweni. Uh, also representing Kenya Young MCS Association. I want to raise one issue. I want to ask Mwishimwa uh, his feelings and his thoughts on the China-Kenya relationship and by extension Kenya, Africa, uh, trade ties. Most of the people have uh, defined uh, the relationship China with Africa as the economic exploitation that they are doing to our country. For example, I come from a ward that uh, a county, Makweni County, where most of the SGR project passed through. And we, we had a lot of exploitation of our people on jobs and so many things. Most of the jobs that the Chinese are taking up in Kenya they are taking jobs that, that can be taken by our people. So he must give us his views. And I think uh, we should think more on the issues of exp uh, expounding and giving youth more spaces. But we must fight because we cannot be given the spaces without fighting. I, I think Mushima wanted to say something. Mushima wapana. Tutanza kuwaribu sasa. Mwacha tufina wale tumechagua, sindio? Wewe kuja karibu. My name is Abaran Gidenji from Nyeri County. I have one question about industrialization. When you look at the population of Kenya, we have a very high penetration rate of people using phones, people using smartphones. So what I ask, eh, you're talking about industrialization. We have a place like Konza City. I have not had the government talking about that Konza City when it will be completed. And if we can have Konza City working, we could have people making smartphones, we can have people making uh, also very, very many electronic gadgets. The other thing, the Chinese came here around uh, 20 years ago. And until now, we are having very big projects being given still to the same Chinese. And we are not seeing any transfer of technology to our young engineers. When you look at the engineers working at the Chinese farms, they are just desk officers. When is this going to change? Because we cannot continue having just foreigners taking all our jobs, and we're still having graduating graduates leaving Nairobi University, more University, Jake Watt. Last year we had around 50,000 graduates graduating. Why are they supposed to go? We don't want our graduates to be Uber drivers or border border riders. We want to get real jobs, and from there we can develop. Thank you. With all due respect to the Uber drivers too, yeah? Hi, sorry, just to remind uh, the people asking the questions, kindly please also think about the solutions. Tell us, what do you propose? You have thought through these problems. They are a headache to you, to our society. But you, you, do, you must have thought about a solution as well. So kindly, thank you. Okay, I'm Priscilla Mukiri from Single Mothers Association of Kenya and working also for the government. I'm a teacher by professional. And I'm happy the way the Honorable Tuju has talked about education. 
uh, in education, you find that uh, there are dip different departments. I'm in the Department of Adult Education, and I've been there for more than 15 years now. And you find that uh, in this department, there are many youths who volunteer themselves of the employed as part-time teachers. Whereby that they get small token, that is about 2,000 per month. And that, man, that money, it's, you are not even sure whether you'll get that money. So you find that uh, there are many people who want to help the, the, people, the ones who have dropped from the school so that they may get that education. Like here we have about eight girls, they are doing KCP this year. But you find that these teachers, they work tirelessly as part-time teachers, and you are aging, being promised that you'll get vacant when the others will retire. Like the ones who were employed in 1979, this year and last year, they are retiring and next year. But you find this part-time teacher has been there, and when the employment come, will not be recognized. They'll just take fresh people from nowhere without even knowledge of teaching. So what are they doing? So that at least, even when these will retire, they'll accommodate the part-time teachers in, the, in this career so that they may help the ones who have experience. They may help the people who have dropped from school. They may indicate illiteracy in the community. Thank you. There was one more summer in... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, the Honourable would like to leave, so maybe just one more from uh, one more from the lady, the sister there, sister, Mora. and then the university students, as he really has to leave. From so one last question. Yes, please. one last, then I'll take one last round after this. Yeah. So we'll turn to the front. Yeah. My name is Elizabeth Mora Gabriel. Ezakuliza mukubwa tu juswali. Mini muimbaji msani. Na talanta yangu na ngangana kujivunia kuwa mkenya, lakini sionu kenya yangu kinisaidia. Na kwa mea mkubwa tuju saimki kuhonyesha zile ukatuni ni mefanya, uwa mwenye otashanga. Na ngangana siku ya mashuja day, nenda na book, nilienda kakamega siku pata chance. Mashoti hatupati chance. Uki ngangana wakanya guachini, tutaenda wapi? Na kuomba wangalia hii picha kusababu ma masaya meyoyoma, uwe mwenye okiziona utai... Nikicheza na governor, not governor, Moshimwa Jagwa, not Jagwa. Listen, even this, Niki entertain Mombasa, Nasifu Kenyangu, like in the party chance to number six in Walemavu, had to as a poor gap. Quavo now about to tete to you, the father, Sinamangi Nihayo. Okay, so we, we'll take one more round. Eh? Thank you very much, SG. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me start with the 30% um, from my daughter from the Youth Agenda. Um, first, I said that what has to be given constitutionally, like number of young people that have got to be nominated and so forth. Those are constitutional, but I still consider it tokenism because not all the youth can, can benefit from it. It's the same challenge we're even having with mainstreaming of women through nominations, and now I've, been, I've heard stories that, oh, you know, those who are being nominated are just slay queens of politicians. So there's a lot of um, controversy around this. What is important for us is how can we bring everybody up? We have the rule of 30%, not only in terms of uh, appointments, but also in terms of government contracts. But even that, in the Kenyan style, get rigged. Yeah? It's the sons and daughters of the well-connected. Okay? We all have children. I can front my kids to be youth and therefore benefit. So, you know, we... we Kenyan style, there's too much rigging going on. But one of the things we have to appreciate is that we, we are having this problem because of poverty. If we were not so poor, we would not be fighting this much. It would not be so vicious. And I always give the example of some women in my village when they were getting some guests in laws who are coming and they borrowed cups from the next village Unfortunately, some next home. Unfortunately, some of the cups, China, got broken. 
right? Then they started fighting. You have broken my china ware, which I had lent you. If they were not poor, everybody would be having their china ware. They would not be borrowing. Is this making sense to you guys? So part of the challenge we have is poverty. And because of poverty, that is why my sister Priscilla is talking about when are we going to get fair treatment? Because the government has challenges in terms of being able to employ everyone. The government can't employ everyone already. And you heard the president talk about it the other day, that 52% of our national budget is being consumed by less than one million people who are working for government. Is it sustainable? No. So we have to look for every way of making sure that we cut down our wage bill so that we can have some money to do real development. I've not analyzed the list that we're talking about. So many people appointed and only three were youth. I don't know, I don't have the profile of the ages and so forth. But should a person lose an opportunity to be employed when they have just hit 38? So the job should be given to a person who is 36. Is youth by itself a qualification? Is youth by itself a qualification? It can't be. No, that's what you say, but it can't be the only qualification. All right? All right? So, I mean, they're all, you know, we, we can argue about this, but I'm asking the question. I'm not giving you the answer. <laughs> the answer is yours. You can debate it. All right? And if we say 30% say of contracts should go to the youth, if you audit that, did it go to the right youth? Maybe not. So the bottom line for me is that the biggest challenge we have is first and foremost poverty. So we have to deal with this poverty issue, and that's where we're talking about industrialization and getting our country to move to the next level. I know. I, had the, I have the opportunity to deal with the president so many times even on issues of appointment. And it tries to go county by county, even when people are being appointed to boards and the rest of it. We try, he tries to go county by county. Why the biggest problem we have in this country is ethnic polarization. If people don't see their community there, they don't care how many youth you have put there. So there's so many other variables that have to be considered. But I'm not saying we can't do better. We can do better. And I think we should strive to do better in mainstreaming of youth in every respect. Let me go to the China question. You have to put China in context. I can tell you it is not easy. But let me just give you an example. Once upon a time, you used to hear that we were borrowing money from IMF, World Bank, and so forth. I was responsible in working with the former president in redefining our policy in terms of international borrowing. Sometimes, the World Bank would borrow money from China Development Bank and then lend it to Kenya at a higher percentage. It's fact. So don't just go hitting at China. These things are much more complicated than that. Take the SGR, for example. Out of 34,000 34, fast speed trains in the whole world, 34,000 kilometers of fast speed trains, there are 34,000, sorry, let me put it this way. 30, there are 34,000 kilometers of fast speed trains in the whole world. 
70% of these are in China. They have the technology, they have the finance, they have the capacity to do it. The center, as far as infrastructure, and including trains are concerned, has shifted east. China today is the second biggest economy in the whole world. Indeed, I don't know of any country in the world today which can finance a project like the SGR. The last time any country was able to do that was in the 1800s when the British built the train uh, line, the railway line from Mombasa to Kisumu and later to Kampala. That was the, year, the era of the British Empire. They don't have that capacity now. They don't have the money for it. That is the truth. I know Jubilee has been accused that we are over-engaging with the Chinese government, the Chinese Communist Party, and all manner of things. I want to tell you, and you're young people, and you should be critical, and you should be analytical. In 1978, I was in high school. Most of you are not born. In this lifetime, in 1978, I can tell you, the GDP per capita of Kenya was higher than the GDP per capita of China. I repeat, the GDP per capita of Kenya was higher than the GDP per capita of China. We were around $500. They were at about $300, $350. Today, we've just crossed to $1,500. They are at $9,000. Their GDP per capita has gone up several times. So we must be ready to learn what is it they did so that they have been able to develop so fast within one lifetime, within one generation. Yes, we must ensure that we don't sell our country to them. We can't allow them to come here and do the kind of jobs that we can do. They themselves have got a lot of challenges. If they can exploit us, they will. But our relationship with them is at an embryonic stage. So all I like to caution you is that we can critique, but let us be more analytical. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, do you have time for more questions? I'll take one last round. Just one last, one round. last round. There was a questions. student association. There was a young politician. Um, so there's a student. Who's a student? And then uh, the other one? There's a young politician the young here. Politician. The we, it's Women's Day. Can we have ladies ask questions? Yes, Ms. Ndoto. Can we have Ms. women chance? representative, please? I think there are two here. Okay. We'll start with him first. Okay. My name is Makori Orina. I'm the commander-in-chief of the Anamd Comrades, and I'm also a member of the Jubilee Party. The people here are young people. Mr. SG, look at their faces. Most of them are disillusioned simply because we looked at the Jubilee Manifesto. And in the Manifesto, there were promises that were given to these young people. It was a covenant. Number one, there was the issues of internships that were going to be paid. But after Jubilee got into power, I'm still a member, but I'm asking you, Bona SG, because you sit on the cabinet, the moves that have been made by the government are affecting these young people. The first issue was the move by the cabinet secretary, the former cabinet secretary, Aminia Mohammed. She was proposing that these young people be arrested for defaulting on help, but they have not been given those jobs that we were promised. Another issue, there is the National Youth Council that is supposed to advocate for the issues of young people. On a forum like this, where are they? The young people are seated here. 
They want to listen to the people who are supposed to streamline their issues. But they are only putting tents there. They don't want to come here and discuss with these young people. So we are asking those agencies that have been tasked with putting the, people of, the lives of young people at, uh, to check on their issues. Let those agencies work for the young people. Something like the NYC. We want elections to be conducted so that the able young people who have the skills be given those positions. Amaja Vidyana. Because these people are skilled. When you give us the analytical between China and Kenya, these young people want you to give them hope, not comparison. Because if you are siblings and you are compared to your elder brother, how will you feel if he's successful and you're not successful? If it's the issues of jobs, let the young people be given jobs. If it's the implementation of a big four, let the young people be involved. Because we as student leaders, we have never ever been called on board to discuss the issues of the big four. Let us be brought on the platforms so that we discuss those issues. Thank you, Bona Esti, with so you. much respect. Thank you. Next question. Good day. My name is Miss Lotto, and I think I have a solution. Um, I produce the next taxpayer. Without a taxpayer, there is no government. So what if young people stop producing taxpayers? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we use this as leverage to negotiate with the government. So you want a taxpayer, no worries, we want this, we want that, rah, 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 et cetera. We move from the highest birth rate in the world to the lowest birth rate in the world to start a revolution. Your thoughts, your feelings on this, thank you. Thank you, that's a very good question. Next, uh, behind you, there's a lady behind you and then we'll come to the MC. Yeah. Just a minute. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bridget Siante. I come from Kajiado, and I'm a student leader at Mo University. Uh, two things. Uh, first, most times we go out as student leaders, and one of us uh, is injured or is killed by the police, uh, but no one takes, no one follows up on what happens to whoever killed the student. There was a case at Meru University. One of us was killed. Amnesty International, KYPA, took it among themselves to follow that, follow that up. But the, the gov we didn't see the government chipping in and helping us to find out who did it. And if whoever who was found, the, the person who was, who was found uh, was taken up, but no one, no one really, we don't know what happened from there. At the same time, I am a sports person, and I would really like to pass this to you. Most of us go out there to represent the country. They do so well. The, athleti the athletes, everyone goes out there and does so well. But what is the government doing to ensure that they, they have a good life when they go out there? Because I have gone out to represent the country, and I was forced to sleep in a school hostel, and I'm going out there to represent the country. I would really like to go out there and sit in a good hotel, because at the end of the day, I am giving good... I'm, I'm, I am putting the name of my country on top of the list. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can, we, can we just finish so that we can go to the next round? We are still talking about Youth Matters, guys. I'm telling you. We're talking about Youth Matters. Two more? Three more. Three more. Three more. So okay. we take so Moshimiwa. Three more. Moshimiwa Ojai. Where is Ojai? So, uh, he's over there. Okay. And a so lady. Yeah. There was a gentleman a here waiting. Thank you. Uh, my name's uh, Luke Opora. I represent the youth in Bungoma and the Deputy Majority Chief Whip. First and foremost, uh, Bwana SG, we want to commend your party Jubilee for nominating uh, brilliant young men uh, in your party who are here. And I want to recognize the Deputy Speaker of Garissa, who is also a young man. Welcome so much, sir. First and foremost, I, it's like the comrade was reading my mind because the agenda and the manifesto of Jubilee really promised these young people about the internship issue. And Bwana SG, the uh, Constitution of Kenya, Article 55, says clearly, clearly that the state shall take measures, including affirmative action programs, to ensure that the youth access relevant education and training. These young people really need to be assisted by this Jubilee administration. Personally, I come from Bogoma County, which was a NASA region as per se, but right now we are on the handshake period, so we are living as a country as one. But it's true, Bona SG. We, as the pe young people from the other region of, of this country, we are really not feeling the government. We are really not feeling the government and what we are asking. I agree with you about the issue of industrialization. It's a way that can create employment for so many young people. But what is the government? 
doing to take transformative measures to ensure that we can even start cottage industries to ensure that these young people can get employment. Because on SG, these young people have gone to school, they are well educated, and it is the obligation of the state to ensure that these young people get employment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two more questions and we're done. Please. Check. Uh, Bonatujo, to me, um, I want to go beyond the politics of uh, uh, Kenya and uh, perhaps look at uh, what we call the IALA, East African Parliament. And uh, more specific to how it was, uh, the composition my name is Dave, and um, I run a campaign called Justice for Lake Victoria using creative arts as an advocacy tool to push for a mindset shift so that we can protect Lake Victoria, which can employ a massive number of people, especially the young people. Talk about transport, water sports, and so forth. But how does these three governments just don't do so much to protect a resource that is the livelihood of, a, of over 35 million people who live around the lake basin. You're talking about even probably another 440 million people if you connect Lake Victoria with the Nile. We are talking about a symbol for our East African unity, something that we are talking about when we talk about Pan-Africanism. But then when it comes to the positions that can actually make people implement ideas that can give people opportunities, like what we are doing, but then there's not so much support. And then if you look at how people who are given these positions at IALA, and you wonder, what are these people doing? Are they having a plan to change the region so that we actually unite for real? Because you cross to Tanzania, and they give you a stamp for two weeks. But when you go to Uganda, you cross the border, you get three months, which is the constitution that says the minimum is about three months, according to how uh, the border works. But then why do they really make Kenyans feel like they're not so much welcomed in Tanzania? What is the EALA mandate? And the opportunities that this institution can present to the millions of youth around East Africa. Thank you. All right, thank you. One last question. Okay, who do we pick? A lady? I feel like it should be a lady. A lady, yeah? Yeah. So let's give it to a lady because... But Vijana, 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 Vijana. come down. Come down, guys. Diana, it's your call. Bado tutaongea. We, bado tunazungumza. We are still definitely going to talk. You. Eh. Okay. Okay. This young man, this young man has traveled far to come here and participate in this. And he's going to take the last, last question. And we're going to request um, Mweshmiwa to give us a chance. The lady in green, kindly, just come down so that we have the final two questions. Sasa, the, the session is still going on. Don't worry. We still have more discussions coming. Hatutoki hapa leo. Sawa. Tutaongea. Asante. I graduated in 2013. Up to now, I don't have a job. I'm asking one question. Why are you pushing me so hard to join Al Shabaab? That's my question. Thank you. That's a very critical question. He graduated in 2013. He's not found a job. So that's a question on employment. I uh, will give a chance to uh, SG to answer the question. Last question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Tuju, yesterday we had a heated uh, argument about corruption. I personally said I was representing the KTN, where we all agreed KTN is Kenya Tamaking Network. I'm a graduate myself, but we, I have an issue which is also a solution. Uh, the way people are saying that Chinese has taken most of our jobs around, Cindy uh, I had a chance to go and visit a friend at Wongata Rongai, and we had a morning run up to where there is a standard gauge railway, like uh, a ground where they are doing their thing. And I found so many youths there looking for jobs. 
Do you know why they are not getting the job than they brought in the Chinese? I don't know if it's gutter press, but it's because most of us are privileged. We went to higher institutions. Wale wanaenda utu to technical colleges. Uh, wanalipishwa school fees. They are not even able to afford. So what do I do if I want to be a mechanic? Naenda kwa rafiki yangu mwenye ni mechanic, ananifundisha. I have all the skills but sina papers. Ikikuja ni kama plumbing ama nini uko SGR, naambua ni toe papers. Sina. Mchainisa naenda analetua because for them, they are formal, it's almost free. They have papers they are brought in to, to work. Please, can, or can you look at it that from this angle that even at TVET, it's so subsidized so much or to the lowest in such that anybody can, anybody can go there, get a certificate and be able to work. Because I also said that I vied. Unapata mtu anakuja, akona hiyo ata certificate ya TVET. Hana 1,000 ya kulipa National Construction Authority apewe license. Na mini li graduate ni kapewa degree, naenda tu natuwa ni pewe kazi. Uyu mwenye alienda TVET alipewa diploma yake ama certificate. Mbona lazima tena ende alipe 1,000 so that apate your job. Na ni job tu ile, I don't know what to call it. Please, thank you. Asanti, Asanti. Let's let, uh, let him pick the, that round of questions. Then we'll continue with the conversation. Hatu toki ya paleo. Asanti. Well, thank you very much. You've raised a lot of issues. But let me tell you, I'm very happy about what I'm hearing. I'm extremely delighted. Because in this country, when I read our newspapers, every day, the only thing which seems to matter is politics. Politics every day. Why aren't we talking about these things? Jobs. Opportunity. It doesn't sell. Right? But I think that it is incumbent upon all of us, all of us, to change the thinking, the paradigm, so that we can really deal with the issues which are important. I'm going to make my final remarks, but before I do that, let me attempt to respond to some of your questions. You are disillusioned. And I can understand where you're coming from. All right? When I left school, just like most of you, I came from a very poor background. I didn't have any connections to get jobs in high places. I didn't inherit anything. There was absolutely no way out for me. I went to Starahe School, so I think you know what that means. I just didn't have those privileges. But there's one thing I had. The drive never to give up. So you could be disillusioned, but one thing I can tell you, do not give up. You can learn that at least from me. Do not give up give up. Most of you who are seated here, you are leaders in your own right. Indeed, I've heard one call himself a commander-in-chief. At least is, is, is aspirational, eh? <laughs> All right? You are leaders in your own right. One of my challenges to you is that use that creativity you have. Think outside the box. I was working part-time for KBC that time. They couldn't give me a full-time job. Then I reached out to Radio Netherlands World Service. I became a stringer. I reached out to BBC. I became a stringer. I reached out to NHK of Japan. I became a stringer. And before long, I was earning more than the PS of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting that time which means I did not only look at what was here in this country. So that by the time I was 26, I was able to buy my first piece of land in Karen. Yeah. 
If you want to, ch- it was 100,000 shillings those days. Yeah. I have the record. But my father was not a minister. My father was not an MCA. My father was just a railway clerk with 21 other children. So he could not take me anywhere. So I'm just sharing this with you, not to, sh- not to show off, but to tell you that your situation is not any worse than the situation of many other Kenyans before you. In fact, in many respects, you are better off. You can get jobs, online jobs. You can do some research. You can do back office operations. There are all manner of things that you are able to do rather than sit and complain and complain and complain. I'm not saying you don't complain. I'm saying you cannot just continue to complain and do nothing else except complaining. All right? So really, I'm challenging you that when I leave this place, I can promise you everything which is written in the Jubilee Manifesto. But as you wait for what will come out of Jubilee Manifesto or not, you must take charge of your own destiny. If I don't tell you that, I'm just cheating you. If you want somebody who is honest, I'll tell you what is honest. If you want me to cheat you, it's okay. Can I start? Yeah? It's not necessary. It's not necessary. So I really know exactly where you're coming from. I was asked so many questions. Um, you talked about extrajudicial killing. I think that should not happen. Just like I think that no boyfriend should kill her, bo- her g- no boyfriend should p- kill her girlfriend in, in college. It happens, isn't it? Just like no girl should commit suicide because they have been dumped by a boyfriend. Just like no, no son should kill their sister or should kill their mother or should kill their father over a piece of land. These are reflections of our own society, of the breakdown of morality, the breakdown of values, and I think it is our responsibility, all of us, to fight them. It cannot be that everything is government, government, government. Government has its role, but all of us have got the responsibility to take charge of our lives. Support to athletes, I was glad that you have represented the country. All right? Um, Unfortunately, you are you a student? And you stayed in a student's hostel, not a five-star hotel. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and where was this? Out of the country? You're so lucky you have even flown out of this place, not all of us, you know? So I think some of this you should take with a pinch of salt. But look at what a lot of Kenyans have done with the athletics prowess that they have. If you go to Eldoret, a lot of the nice homes you see there are from our athletes. They didn't get anything from government. They have got it from their own sweat. So if you have that talent that you're already able to represent the country, work hard so that you can also make money from that profession, that talent that you have. Yes, it is important that the state works and does everything to get jobs for you. That is the primary responsibility of leadership, and I can tell you, I was also your age some years back, and it was a responsibility for the state to get me a job. Unfortunately, my sister is there, we are contemporaries. The state did not get me a job that time. The first time that I can say I ever did a state job, those who know my background in broadcasting, it was part-time. The first time I got a state job is when I contested to be a member of parliament. 
So no state job was provided for me. It is our responsibility as government to create the atmosphere in which people can thrive, people can do business, economy can grow, so that people get opportunity. But that will only happen when we deal with vices like corruption, runaway corruption that we are having in the country. But I told you, we'll not deal with corruption for as long as we think that our tribe is, should not be asked when they are corrupt. So again, the responsibility, we are also part of it. I'm sure if I stood here with my brother Wetangula and you are from Bungoma and you are asked to vote for one of us to lead, you'll vote the, vo you'll vote the Bungoma guy. True or not true? Yeah? So that is <laughs> that's part of our challenge. And that's not only me. It's all of us in this room. So we should also take responsibility for the malady, the illness that we are going through as a country today. Um, you talked about Islam community and you've raised some issues which I think are worth looking at. But I can tell you our relationship with Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya is work in progress. You may not know, but Tanzania has, for example, never forgiven Kenya for the, for the breakup of the East African community in, the 90, in 1978. I can admit to you right here that that time when it was broken, it was the mistake of Kenya. So they have not forgiven us. All right? So it is crimes of our fathers, <laughs> which is keeping uh, making us what we, making us go through what we go through. But you can also not say it crimes of our fathers. There was also the international geopolitical alignment. Tanzania was aligned to China. Kenya was aligned to the Western world. And our policies could not gel and work together. So the community, it was inevitable that it breaks. But the breakage was initiated from the Kenyan side. And in some respects, they have never recovered from it. Because when the planes, East African Airways aircraft came to Kenya, we confiscated them. So <laughs> since that time, <laughs> Uganda Airways never picked up, neither did Tanzania. All right? So there's a lot of subtext in our relationship with our neighbors. And it is something that we are trying to deal with. I'm being brutally honest. You've never heard that before, have you? <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Why, why are we pushing you to join Al Shabab? I want to tell you, my children. Most of you are my children. I want to tell you, if I had jobs, do you think I could keep it away from you? If I had the jobs, would I just decide that I don't want you to get the jobs? Uh, yeah? Okay? Uh, I mean, I want to tell you, it cannot be the desire of those of us who are in the positions that we occupy at this moment and time that Kenyans should be suffering. I cannot wake up in the morning and work the whole day, and go to bed, and pat myself in the back, that today I got so many millions to be miserable. The situation is very difficult. I did explain to you why, for example, we are in the situation in which we are in so many respects. The youth population bulge, an economy which did not grow fast enough when our population was skyrocketing several other international dynamics, we have challenges. For example, I'll give you, look at South Korea. In 1963-64, they were at the same economic level with us. Today, we are, no, they are no, we are nowhere near them. What is one of the reasons? Because they had a much, much better direction in terms of their policies. 
key amongst them was transition from primary school to secondary school. They were at 95 to 98% transition to high school when we were at the level of about 30%. Over a period of 50 years, it shows. So I can understand the anger. And I can understand why you would not even want to listen. But that does not change the fundamentals. So we are where we are because not only of the problems of today, but of the problems of the past. Thank you very much. My best wishes. So thank you very much. Um, the section is requesting to leave youths interesting conversations. Bado tunaendelea na kazi. Thank you so much. I really appreciate just to tell you that it's not only the role of the government to create employment for us. It is not the role of the government only to provide employment for us. So that is why in our next panel discussion, we are going to have a young politician from Denmark, Ms. Clara uh, Havosen. But actually, sorry, we're going to take a break. Then we're going to talk to civil society. We're going to talk to a young parliamentarian from another uh, country, that is Denmark. Kaboge. We are going to talk to the young MCA. We're going to talk to a young MP as well. So conversations will go on. It is not just for the government, but civil society is here, and let's run from other people. All so, right. Tafadali Msiende, please don't leave. Let the DJ entertain us. If okay. you want to dance and I shake told a you, bit, Nisawa. I told Thank you me. that the Senator Sakaja is, uh, is coming. Yeah? So, Wase uh, Tutulia, uh, uh, the CEO. As, as we get... As, as we get uh, entertained, uh, Nyotandogo is also in the house. Sijika ukona reggae, nipatia reggae hapo. Ukona reggae hapo. Ukona reggae. Ukona reggae. So, as we change, as, as, we get, as we get the other panel in place, I also have performers from Denmark, Martin, Clara, the three musketeers. You must perform. <laughs> We will get entertainment from Denmark. <laughs> so, we still have a lot to do. Still have a lot to do. Let's consult on the side. Let's, let's guys, let's consult on the side.
with his team, Rasta, with percussion discussion. Now, there are several changes to what we had planned, and the changes keep coming, but then, you know, we are, we will flow with the changes. This is the inaugural uh, People Dialogue uh, Festival. We are learning things as we go by, but we will go on, all right? So, as I get these seats on stage, uh, just get the seats alone, it's fine, I think. I think we just have the seats okay, without the measures. Um, yeah. I have a number of panelists, so you may care. Which come on up in Tano, my name. Tano. Okay. I also have some MCAs, young MCAs, whom uh, I'll bring them to join you so that to make the discussion more lively, okay? So as I told you guys, Nyotandogo is in the house. Wale wana kumbuka viatu, kuna viatu, na 
Watu na viatu. Oh, kuna watu. Oh, kuna watu na viatu duniani. You go area, you go area sana 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 sana. Kuna watu sijua alipiga wakataava ama nini. Lenye tipi mororo. Eh, sijui kwa wale pigwa kataba ini hapo. <laughs> so we've changed. We were supposed to have Diana moderating this session, but uh, we're gonna have Kawive. Kawive will introduce himself. So let me have the panelists come on so that we start this. Uh, let me have Clara. Clara is from uh, Clara is from the Social Liberal Party of Denmark. Makofi kwa Clara. Lara is from uh, Denmark. Uh, Miss Nerima Wako is ours here from uh, Siasa Place. To be a coffee, Nerima Wako. Chris Mark, is, has Chris Mark arrived? Right? Chris Mark? Begin Chris Mark Makofi. Now, I will add two MCAs here. This our I will call so you will just include them in your questioning and your discussion. So, so Joyce Waboy, MCA from Orana County. Where is she? I love Naluko Pura from Bugoma. Yuko. Look. Say Salimia Kawife. Okay. So you you yeah, the MCAs, I know you were not briefed. So you will flow with the punches. You will flow with the punches. Ole, uh, and Tiwaine Olen Choko. You go happy? Tiwaine Olen Choko. This is going to be a very lively discussion. Tiwaine Olen Choko. Where is uh, Joyce Wapoy? Joyce. You are a Joyce? All right. Where is Joyce Kitty Pandey? Salimia Kawive is the moderator. <laughs> so, guys, this is what's going to happen. This is it's not random. It's, it's not random. But out of necessity, we're going to have this panel, and we're going to have discussions around youth inclusion uh, into a, a topic that Kawivo is supposed to tackle: uh, constitutional, legal, and institutional reforms key to Kenya's democratic renewal. So, these guys. They're gonna discuss it. Please, let's make it as lively as possible. Badai, this is going to take around one and a half hours. So, Kawive. So, let me invite Kawive Wabua to take it over. Kawive Karibu. Thank you. Uh, Are the mics, uh, the microphones on the table? Thank you so much. I think uh, we have uh, a large, a large panel. We have two issues to deal with. Number one is. Uh, youth inclusion, and with it, the legal, constitutional, and institutional reforms that we need in this country to make Kenya uh, have what is called a democratic renewal. Of course, Clara here does not know much about the Kenyan, the Kenyan uh, scene, but she's going to talk to us about examples from Denmark, and how especially youth are included in political, social, institutional, and other reform processes in the country. So I want to welcome all of you uh, to this discussion. Wamboi, karibu sana. Opora, karibu sana. Clara, karibu sana. Nerima, karibu sana. Mark, karibu sana. And Taiwo, tuwaine nchoko. Hey. I just asked him, what does, uh, how do you say, how are you in Kima? And he said, super. Eh? Super. So guys, we've got two issues here. Number one, youth inclusion. That has been a question throughout the day here. The youth are feeling that uh, they participate in being told, and that is the beginning and the end of their conversation. They are not included beyond hearing. Okay. And especially so when there are people in front of them telling them things. And 
the other issue is now we are thinking about uh, making the Kenya democratic space uh, to renew it. There, there's been a lot of woe and cry that we want to have a new, a renewed democratic engagement in this country. What does that mean? What does it mean that for Kenya we want a renewal? Are we saying that we have issues, problems that need to be resolved? And what are these issues? Constitutional, legal, and institutional reforms. What do we need to make Kenya a new country? But to start out, to start us off, I would like to invite Nelima, Nerima to say something about youth inclusion. What are the dynamics of youth inclusion in this country? Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Um, that's quite a loaded question. When we talk about youth inclusion, um, with CSA Place, my organization, we look mainly at public participation a lot. So Tuaweza did a research, and when we look at youth, the average age, 19, but when we look at the bracket of 18 to 24, that's the least participation, the least. So Yani, if we had a public participation forum, even like right now this room, there are more youth than any public participation forum. And so when you look at it nationally, it means that when we talk about devolution with so much pride and public participation as being one of the avenues for youth to participate, that means majority of our population is not participating. It's actually at 24%. So I would say that it's there in the constitution, but implementation is another story. And it's not necessarily something that even, for instance, governance see as important to talk to youth or to engage youth. And also, youth don't really see the importance of engaging because of lack of information toward that. Is it lack of, is it, uh, how do you put that? Is it lack of information, Nelima, or is it just that there's just too much talk and nothing concrete? After we have participated, is there anything that you'd see? Is that what is keeping them away? I, it's, it's so complex. Like, I've attended some public forums where people will just read things that have already been decided, and so your opinion doesn't count. And then I've attended some where youth will actually give an opinion, and then it's just not picked up or collected and nothing happens. But I have seen a difference as to when you educate, because it's lack of information. Where are you taught about the Constitution? Did you learn it in school, unless you're a lawyer? Exactly. So there's lack of information. So if people knew about those avenues, youth do put pressure. They do, and I've seen it working even now. And once youth are knowledgeable, it actually scares political leaders. Because now they feel, I have to do something for my people so that they do not chase me out of my own office one day when I come and I've not made promises that I have not kept the promises that I made. Okay. Thank you so much, Clara. Uh, Nelima, I'm thinking about Clara because I'm thinking that she has different experiences from what we have in this country. Maybe you can share that a bit. Before we come to Aishimiwa, the Aishimiwa, these are the people who we are, <laughs> we are being told don't involve the youth in decision making. They'll tell us right now uh, as they tell us what from there. But Clara, how are youth involved or how are they included in political processes, in decision making, and in sharing the national cake? I think uh, youth in Denmark are included, but actually youth in Denmark faces just the same problems as youth all around and youth here. I think uh, it's a global fight for, for youth to be heard. And in Denmark, we experience exactly the same things that sometimes even we are invited as youth to participate, but are given speech notes that then we should say something that is okay or that is approved or uh, we are invited but not listened to. We see that and we see that quite often and I think that's important to say and important to remember that in Denmark I fight every day to be heard and to have the right to, to be young and to have an opinion. But of course there are also some initiatives that allow youth in Denmark to have an opinion and to participate. We have a very, very strong independent youth council that uh, is not a part of the government, not a part of the state,
but are receiving money in order to be, to be independent and to engage and empower youth all around Denmark. It's empowering the different youth organizations, so they, with, first of all, with funding, so they're able to run, so they're not being dependent on the state or depending on having a specific opinion uh, in order to, to be heard. And uh, they're educating youth all around in Denmark in raising their voices, in participating in democracy, in the importance of voting, in the importance of speaking up for your right. And I think that is one of the strongest initiatives that we have. And then just to highlight one thing, we figured out the exact same thing as you, that youth were not participating in democracy in Denmark. And it's a big problem. We have a really high voting percentages at our elections. And we could see that youth started not to vote. And when youth are not voting now, as young people, they're not voting when they get older, and suddenly you have a really, really big democratic problem. So now every second year, the Youth Council, together with the Danish Parliament, is running school elections, where we run a parliamentarian elections for school kids all around Denmark. They get education on the parties, they get education on democracy, they get education on how to participate. And then uh, all the youth parties uh, in Denmark are going out to all schools, even the smaller schools, and they run debates, and you can ask them anything you want about the topic that, that's really important to you as a youth, and they answer the debate, and then you go vote, and the kids are 12 or 13 or 14 years old, and they go vote for the parties, and then you can actually see that they start participate more in democracy. So that's one thing we do. Clara, uh, you were elected to the Danish Youth Council. Yeah. How did that process, how did you get, we have a youth council in this country, which uh, at some point, I think Nalima, you'll correct me, but disappeared. Or oh, it's still there. It's still there. Okay. But you are elected. How are the processes? How is the process? Um, because the youth council is uh, representing all of the youth organizations in Denmark. Right now, 77 youth organizations. Then all these organizations can put in members for the board. And then you run in a transparent elections and we were too many running for the board. So we had to stand up, make a speech, tell about our visions for the youth council, how we want to put the youth council forward. And then at the Congress, then everyone there votes, and then you get elected. And uh, there's no states pointing at who should be there, who should not. And if you perform badly, then you're not elected ne next time. OK, thank you. Uh, uh representatives of the people elected or nominated uh, through party processes and others. Uh, what is your take on youth inclusion in this, in, in this country? And as we are thinking about a democratic renewal of Kenya, what is the place of youth? Let's start with the one boy at the end. Uh, thank you. Uh, the well, I would say the inclusion is not, is not that good. And probably I will start with our, our, the policies that are there for the Kenyan youths. And I will say the, the policies are there, very good, very nice. But at the level of implementation, that is where we have problems. For instance, the, um, most of the people who are here, they remember I asked Senator Wetangula and the other lady what they are doing about the 30% Procurement Act. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that as MCAs, we only make laws or bylaws in our respective counties. So it becomes very difficult for us to create laws that will govern the whole country or youth as, as, at large. So um, we have been made to look like we are political pawns, such that when it's political time, that is when youth matters. Uh, and when it's time for inclusion, we are given so many narratives. We are given uh, issues that we don't have enough skills. Uh, we probably we are the people who are stealing. Probably we have this and that. So what what are we trying to say? Yesterday I told most of the people that who are here that we cannot we cannot be able to advocate for youths until we create a body amongst themselves amongst ourselves. We organize ourselves and we start speaking as a voice. And like when you speak as one. Okay. So for once, we need to organize ourselves because we've seen even for the leaders that were here. Really, the, um, 
our interests do not really matter to them. And also, I don't know if you know that 85% of our populations to, our population today in Kenya is below 35 years. So for sure we are sitting on a time bomb that will surely explode. So it's time that we need to start thinking about youth. Clara said that there are no laws as such, but there is a body which is funded by the exchequer to popularize and to educate youth issues. And basically what you have said, and I know National Youth Council, I am told, I know there's a National Youth Council, and I'm told the representative of the Youth Council are here, Eric is here, and we will ask Eric just to, to give us a run on what is happening with the Youth Council. Why are you saying, Wamboy, and I don't want you to answer this, why are you saying that we do not have a voice as the youth, we are not collectivized? There's a National Youth Council, we will come to that. But, uh, uh do the youth fight? Do they fight for their space? Do uh, they get it if they fight? What happens? Uh, uh, I will say, sorry, I'm trying to... Kawine. 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 Yes, the youth do fight for their space. And uh, it's good that I can see uh, she's from the Youth Council of Denmark. I had a chance to be in Denmark back in 2014, courtesy of uh, Bent and um, able chair of CMD then. And for me to go there, I had fought for that space to be in that CMD board. I was the youngest board member. I served in the CMD. My able chair is still there, Omingo Magara. And one of the things I noticed that I had the space and I had fought for it, but there would always be a meeting after a meeting. And I wouldn't blame the, the, the senior members in the board because to them they felt maybe I've just been put there to fit that criteria of youth. So I also had to prove myself. So I started making sure I would get the quota reports and also contribute. So yes, the space is there, but the problem with the space, it is taken as a criteria to maybe feel that issue that the youth need to be somewhere. It is, that is why as Kenya young members of county assembly, we really brought the MCS together because they're 1,027 under 35. And if they do not have the skills and power, they shall always remain as a statistic so that when you go to the party, they say, yes, we nominated youth. But exactly what are they doing? That is why we, we said the biggest tool we can have as MCS to help our fellow youths is understand the budget-making process, caucusing, and uh, even legislation making, because I've been around the country and, uh, you know, I can speak and uh, my colleagues are here. You find that there is no motion which has been passed, example, in a county because any time a motion comes, maybe the youth was not empowered enough to know how to draft it. So the House Business Committee locks it up. So at the end of the day, yes, there's that space, but that space has limitations to the sense that it is taken as to fit a certain criteria or a certain requirement so that, you know, when you go somewhere, we are told uh, chapter, I mean, Constitution, uh, chapter 55 says we should do this for the youth, you know. So it shouldn't be just a space without the empowerment because the youth will end up not achieving uh, their goal and they will start saying, you see, we said the youth cannot make it. And you see, and uh, before I finish, there's a, like, example, Dev. Dev wants to go for the Sooner West MP. If he's given a space in, the, uh, uh, let me assume it's ODM or Jubilee then, but he's not empowered to be in the decision-making part of the party. He will not be the favorite candidate, not because he has not the agenda or anything, but he's not empowered to know how he, to deliver or how to actually woo the voters. Uh, I am actually hoping very seriously that you are not saying that we write a law which expressly says that uh, youth should be given without fighting. No. I, I, I hope that is not what... But, no, definitely. But, yeah, definitely. But thank you, thank you. So, Mwishmiwa uh, from Kajiado, tell us, what is, what is uh, your view about youth inclusion? And also start us off on the issue of uh, uh, constitutional and other institutional reforms that are necessary for democratic renewal and what will the youth do? Right now we are hearing so many people talking, oh, referendum, oh, change which law, oh, IBC must go home. No, those are words out there. What is the stake of the youth? Uh, thank you, uh, Kawive, right? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I'm not a Mwishimiwa person. You, you, you could call me Mwishimiwa for just being a Kenyan, yeah. and that's okay. But I, I'm, not, I'm neither an MCA nor a member of, of parliament. No, but I'm also a Mwishimiwa. And thank I'm you. Shouting, yeah. thank, so we agree on that. Yeah. Um, if, if, if I might give you the example of Narok, Narok does not have um, you know, that many young people in, in, in the assembly, but there are a number. Apart from the people who are nominated by various political parties, there are MCAs who actually won, who are elected by the people, who are young people. You know, as young as I am, 
some even younger. Um, when we were having um, plenary discussions yesterday, the issues of youth and, and, and women, you realize, are very critical in the sense that every time youth is mentioned, every time um, women issues are mentioned, there is um, a tendency to gravitate towards you know, an argument that women and youth want freebies. And that is not the case. I think um, the, the, the Waishimi who are here will tell you that they are fighting for their space, you know, as MCS, as members of parliament. And I think it's very important to mention that even in the National Assembly, we have young uh, men and women who are elected to that house. The youngest member of the National Assembly from uh, one of the constituencies in Meru is around 25, 26. We have... Um, Where did he go? I, I don't know. But, but I know he was elected by his people. Um, we have guys like... He's um, is a, is a member of parliament called Osoro. There's Mohamed Ali. You know, quite a number of young guys. So I think to begin with, we are making progress. And it's gradual. I want to believe that it can only be drastic if it's um, a violent revolution, which is not what we want. So in terms of, you know... Uh, youth fighting for their space, they are doing it. We may not have found that one voice, that one platform, but we are making progress. And I think it's very important to mention that. Now, when it comes to issues of um, laws and policies, let us first agree that we have a very progressive constitution. Today we have uh, a youth quota and a women quota in leadership and in procurement because of the law. Now, whether that law and those policies are being implemented is, is a different discussion altogether because most people will agree that that is not the case. Now, can we as youth make practical um, steps, you know, up our, 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 our involvement in leadership with the current set of laws and policies? My answer would be yes. What we need to do is to organize ourselves. You know, yesterday, um, when, when someone mentioned um, the Building Bridges Initiative and the fact that they were at KICC collecting views yesterday while we were here, um, the youth who were in the, in, the, in the auditorium were not aware that the Building Bridges Initiative was actually collecting views at KICC, and one of the interest groups that had been invited was the youth. So if we had a properly functional, structured way of communicating. If this youth council is able to communicate to all the relevant branches, be it political parties, be it other independent um, bodies, people that have come together and organized themselves to project the youth voice. If you're able to disseminate this information to, to, to those people, they will be able to show up and, 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 and give uh, relevant and, and, and critical memoranda. To, 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 to either the BBI or you know, whichever other body wants to, to get the views of the youth. As it is, I think we, we, we are too scattered. We, you know, everyone is talking about